Today we're checking out the all new Pixel Watch 3. I just had to try the larger 45 millimeter to see what the difference is over the previous Pixel Watch 2. Price on this starts at $349 for the smaller size, $399 for the 45 millimeter. Luckily I've got an older Pixel Watch to trade in, so it's quite a bit cheaper. I decided to go with a matte black aluminum case with the Obsidian Active Band. And then you have two size choices, 41 or 45 millimeter. It's got a 6 16% smaller bezel and it's an actual AMOLED LTPO display plus it's brighter at up to 2000 nits brightness instead of 1000. You also have quite a few more extra fitness tracking features on here as well. The one I have is Wi-Fi only, but there's also an LTE version. Pretty nice, they include two different sizes for the watch band. They give you instructions, even though it's pretty simple how the band attaches. Okay, pretty nice way to display the watch. Okay. Okay, seems simple enough to attach the bands. You kind of get it close to the edge and then just slide it over a little bit. You can see all the sensors in the center underneath. As you can see, it's a pretty similar style to the Pixel Watch 1 and 2. It's almost hard to tell that this is the Pixel Watch 3, but you will notice the band looks a little bit bigger. Obviously the display is larger and the crown on the side is pretty similar as well. And then obviously you have different sensors now going from the first one up to the Pixel Watch 3. As you can see, it's pretty similar to the Galaxy Watch 7 as far as size goes. Okay, sort of similar to my Fitbit Versa 4, where it only charges one way. Looks like the crown aligns with the cable. You can't get much simpler than this. Once you connect the watch to the charger, it pops right up on my Pixel phone. And then you just choose which account to log into. And then just a few step-by-step -step things to get it set up. You can also decide which wrist your watch is on, also where the crown is, because you can swap the bands so the crown's on the opposite side. And then of course, this is going to work with Fitbit as well. If you already had another Fitbit device, you'll just want to choose replace with Google. And then it should just take a second to connect. Nice thing is it lets you use the Fitbit app or the Google Watch app as well. Then it's going to walk you through some of the features like emergency SOS. Of course, you have the Google Assistant on here as well. You can also set a pattern or a pin on here as well if you want to lock your watch. You can also use Google Wallet on here as well and choose which apps you want to use from the Play Store. Once you go through that, it just takes a second and then it's ready to use. It's currently at 82%. You can sort of see it charging around the outside as well. You've got quite a few options here as far as the watch faces go. You can customize the colors, the layout, the complications or features that it shows. And then you can also add quite a few watch faces on here as well. You can also decide which tiles it's going to show. You can also reorder those, or you can add quite a few different tiles on here as well. Of course, you can do this right in the watch app, or you can do it right on the watch as well. Another thing you'll probably want to do is go into notifications and then decide which apps you want notifications for, because more than likely you're not going to want to turn on all the notifications. You can also mute notifications, hide silent notifications, allow new app notifications, mute phone calls, and mute notifications on phone. And then to use the watch is pretty simple. Swipe up for notifications, swipe down for quick settings, swipe left or right to cycle through your tiles. If you press the crown, you can get to all of your apps. You've also got a side button here that you can use for recent apps. And then of course, if you swipe left, you can go back to the home screen. And then of course, if you just rotate the crown, you can cycle through what's on the screen as well. You've also got haptic feedback or small vibrations each time that it rotates. A shortcut to Google Pay, just double press the crown. And you can customize a lot of stuff on here. You can decide whether you want always on display, adaptive brightness, and so on. 
So just testing this watch out a little bit, it appears the step and sleep tracking seem to be pretty accurate on here. So that's good to see. Of course, I had to test the floors climbed because my Galaxy Watch 7 always says zero, pretty much no matter what. But luckily this one recognizes when I'm going up and down stairs. It is a little more delayed and doesn't seem quite as instant or as accurate as my Fitbit Versa 4, but at least it's getting somewhat close. Hopefully they can improve on that with a software update. But yeah, definitely better than my Galaxy Watch 7. One thing I did notice, this watch is a tad heavier than the Galaxy Watch 7 by about 10 grams. So not a lot, just something I thought I would mention. I have to admit, this is gonna be tough to choose between this and my Galaxy Watch 7 because I really like the design on that one. But this one's pretty nice now that it's larger and fits my wrist a little better. It's got really nice build quality. It just feels really nice to use. So we'll see how it goes once I use this for a little bit longer. They're saying up to 36 hours with battery saver, 24 hours with always on display. To me, it looks like I can get about two full days with light use as far as battery life goes. So probably a little less than the Galaxy Watch 7, but we'll see once I use it more and give it some time to adjust to how I use it. And I'll include that in my update video. So far, I really like what I'm seeing with this new larger Pixel Watch 3. They probably should have came out with this size when the original Pixel Watch came out, but hey, better late than never. I do think this is a nice option, especially if you have an older Fitbit Versa, except for the battery life, because I can get about a week on my Fitbit Versa 4. But overall, I really like this watch so far. And like I said, I'll be doing an update video once I use this a little bit longer. Plus, I've got a lot more stuff that I'm working on. So you'll want to keep an eye out for those upcoming videos. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.